Que reste-t-il de nos amours Des jours de gloire, de nos beaux jours Hello, welcome to this video. This is going off to a great start. This is going to be a response to uh, Shadowversity's tweet uh, and video and um, subsequent tweets. Okay, disclaimers. I'm not going to argue on the AI is theft argument. Not because uh, I, I don't agree. But because chat doesn't agree, and I think that would be kind of pointless, and a lot of people are talking about this. And I want to talk about something else. I am also not uh, exactly a professional artist, though I do aspire to work uh, in the industry. And uh, uh, therefore do think about this shit a lot. Uh, I hope uh, I'm not insufferable. Part 1, the lore. So, a few days ago... Uh, Shad made a tweet. My skills are increasing, making a video as we speak showing my process and how I get these results. Responses were heated, but Shad uh, said that he would do, in this tweet that I just read, he said he would do a video showing his process. And, uh, I have some thoughts. Among other things, Shad showed his process uh, to get a Supergirl image he was generating. Uh, the process was him using a prompt combining specific uh, models, uh, retweaking it, sort of uh, adjusting errors in Photoshop to sort of guide the model where he wanted it to go and sort of rinse and repeat. All in all, not a terrible way of using this technology. You could use it to, for instance, get a starting base uh, just sort of ready to go. And you can reiterate on top of that, just do a paint over, stuff like that. And artists do use these sorts of cheats all the time. Ross Draws, if you've seen his videos, does use a form of uh, photo bashing, where he would uh, use sort of crude photos uh, and pull them apart, really like sort of bending limbs and adjusting colors the way he wanted uh, to sort of get give him a base, right? Uh, to get it to do what he wants. In fact, a lot of concept artists do use this. Heaps and heaps and heaps of references uh, sort of mashed together to complete pieces rapidly. Uh, although they use it to uh, very specific ends in mind. All this to say, Shad is onto something here. <laughs> He's discovered the secret. <laughs> no, I, I do think artists will use tools similar to this soon. If the database is trained correctly. I even think, right, that it might, might be beneficial to artists in the long run. In ways I can't even imagine right now. And, you know, even beyond that, there are lots of people, disabled people, who can't use traditional ways, traditional ways, uh, that maybe the, the, the skill set is steep too high for them. And, and now they can express themselves. And I think that's cool. I think that's cool. Do you think that's cool? I do think, though that we are facing a problem. Part two, the inciting incident. Do you, do you get it? Do you, do you get what I'm doing with these titles? Like, he, cause, cause Chad's a writer, I thought he would appreciate. I'm smart. I wanna highlight something in Chad's video. At the start, he shows a few drawings he did himself, uh, be it on pen and paper or through digital means, like digital inking or painting. Going through these, you can definitely tell they're from the same guy. Now, there's there's lots I could criticize about his art, uh, but some of it is like really good. This dwarf, for example, is like uh, I, I I do love this dwarf. It's it's spot on. It has some some good, really good line weight. It has heft to it. Uh, I love how heavy and blocky he feels. He's like some sort of He's like some sort of brick just sitting there. 
I love the details on the hammer too. Uh, the the it's it's really hard to get like these intricate uh, patterns uh, consistent, especially on a, on a curved surface. Can you tell I'm doing this off the cuff? <laughs> Come to think of it, these uh, drawings, a lot of them have a really good understanding of armor and weapons. Uh, they they sort of like uh, they they fit really well on the body of his characters, which is cool, and it isn't really surprising. Shadowversity is a channel on medieval weapons and and combat techniques. Uh, he regularly wears uh, this type of armor on himself on his person, and clearly has a deep passion for this stuff. So if if anybody's gonna know how to draw this, is him. I'm not in. I'm not in the fucking camera view. Now I've said there are still things to criticize, mostly because I'm a fucking prick. But this this isn't to say that Shad should just get good, or that any artist, in fact, in the whole wide world, uh, should get to my arbitrary line of what good means. I'm just saying that if Shad wants to get good there are ways he can do it this is where the problem is Shad shows an example of how his original art compares to an enhanced ai version the image on the left is clearly going for a style right to me it sort of reminds me of like um wink's design right uh very elongated features slim body uh um exaggerated face with like the big lips and maybe the pixie cut does that too but for whatever reason uh this i think works i mean it's it's not wrong the anatomy is not realistic at all but it works for this style you could nitpick the shading, uh, maybe work on the textures a bit, uh, do some harsher shadows to get more form out of this drawing, but for the most part, this drawing has the most essential part. It has character. The image on the right, though. <laughs> Okay, so I'm not an expert on giving feedback, but what I can say immediately is Shad is trying to uh, just apply realistic textures to the same proportions, which were fine a minute ago. They, they, they were okay. Now, though, they seem just glaringly false because the two styles are clashing. Y you know, though, the... Images of cartoon characters like Homer Simpson, Rick Sanchez, uh, in uh, sort of realistic 3D renderings, right? Y you know what I'm talking about. In those images, they sort of just look kind of sickly and sad and macabre. That's basically what's happening here. I suspect unintentionally. Yeah, I had this work here. Wasn't happy with it. I posted it on Twitter. And I got a bit of feedback, but I wasn't really, I wasn't really sure, you know, where to go with it. And uh, it was actually at the Nomen event that uh, there was Dylan Eckert there, who's a character artist from Disney. And I came up to him and I'm like, hey, can I show you some work? You know, bust my balls, tell me what you think of it. And he said, sure. I took out my iPhone and straight away he pointed out, he goes, you got two different sources of lighting. Looks very odd. Backlit and frontlit. Doesn't match. And also you got two different styles. You've got a cartoony style face and then you've got some realistic hair. You have to match them up. Like, interesting. Straight away, I knew exactly what he meant and it only took like a minute, but it saved me hours of work. So my future works, um, I worked on this and it improved a lot. All right, I'd hope to, I'd hope to say it improved a bit. This video was posted six years ago on Blender's YouTube site. And Andrew, that's him, is recounting how simple feedback gave him a better grasp of what to look out for in his drawings and got noticeably better. I do, I do find it kind of amusing that this video just sort of very pointedly describes what's wrong with, with AI, the, the sort of lack of intentionality and lack of understanding. It's like a fucking sniper from the past 
coming all the way here, hitting its bullseye. It's amazing. Also, the the face is kind of less appealing, right? Like the first one had sort of like harsh and rugged features uh, that you don't really see uh, on a woman's face typically, but they're just gone for this generic-looking moe girl, which probably is a king for someone, but. We're still looking for one. The hair is sticking out kind of like the same way too. It has the same cut. That doesn't really seem possible with those textures. The skirt is way too shiny. Is that leather? It, it didn't seem like leather at the start. And that gap in the breastplate? Okay, pause. At this point, uh, I have spent a lot of time talking about one image, well, two images really. Some people, maybe even Shad's, would say I'm nitpicking. And to be fair, I do get how it can seem very discouraging and uh, uh, even aggressive at times. But what I'm trying to say is this is a recurring problem with these models, even, even more specifically with the people using these models. It's a thing. A lot of these small decisions that are important in, in subtle and less subtle ways are made pretty willy-nilly by the AI. That's not bad, nor is it good. After all, you know, Andrew, I shown a minute ago, did the same thing and he recognized that there was a mistake in his process or people pointed it out to him and he adjusted his process and reiterated it on top of it. I'm concerned that People won't learn how to recognize. Their method of analysis is maybe not up to par. After all, Shad did leave these in. Part 3, training up. Line work is a beast of a subject, right? Everything from a smooth inking to a chunky brush to a mechanical same with lining is so satisfying to watch but it's so difficult to synthesize but i'm gonna try anyway there are lots of reasons why you might want to try different uh types of inking uh some for cultural references or artistic references sometimes to translate information so that the artwork is clearer some artists use this uh this cheat i i've seen on on some blueprints right on, on like text stuff basically where the outlines are thicker than the inlines sort of uh, enhancing the silhouette uh this is something i use often it is kind of cool uh some use thick lines to point out how close to the camera uh, objects are uh, as opposed to far away objects with uh thinner lines to sort of contrast. Some will use thick and thin to add a rhythm or mark a stark difference. Pernilurum. I I'm I'm so sorry. If you're watching this, I do love your art. This person on Instagram does this uh, cool thing with her characters where she she does make outlines for the face and body and, and usually clothes too but would leave the outlines of the hair of her characters just completely blank no, no outlines at all to me it highlights the sort of softness of the hair uh, and different materials she doesn't do this all the time but uh, when she does i think it's pretty cool actually going through her her, her work just now uh <laughs> I kind of realize she she sometimes does the exact opposite thing that I do that I said earlier like with with the outlines the silhouette where she she, she does this thing where basically there's there's no outlines and just focuses on inlines but that just goes to show how like there's no rules for this shit I've also heard and this is true uh this is a true fact about the world right that some artists use no lines at all i know right couldn't be me this tangent is going right to my obituary so that my friends and family may suffer as i have but also you might notice 
that this tangent was only about lines. Fucking squiggles on the paper. There are countless niche hyperfixations that actually like make an artwork, right? From anatomy to color theory to composition to textures to precise flicks of a wrist. It's a lot, and each of them can get even more complicated than simple lines. And honestly, I'm not qualified to talk about all of them, or even most of them. I do know, though, that most AI people can't even be bothered to be interested. Even Chad would agree, I think, because he does separate himself from other AI artists by saying, I am an artist. I've developed a very keen eye for proportion and detail, and I have applied that in every artistic pursuit in whatever medium I'm using. There are many people who use AI art who have seen my images that I've made with this technology and have literally asked, how on earth do I produce these results? They see a difference in the quality that I'm able to achieve versus the quality that they have been able to achieve. And the answer is, I'm applying every single talent I've developed in multiple mediums in my pursuit and love of art to this medium as well. Mr. Shat seems to think that his art knowledge helps him stand out from the rest. And I think he's right. He does show some know-how in his process, making choices intentionally. He also proves what I've been arguing since an infant capable of speech, that the lasso tool is the most powerful tool of all. But notice, notice how Shad is limited, despite having this tool at his disposal. He manages to get a lot of the mistakes the model spits at him, but there are a lot more problems with this image than meets the eye. Here's a tip uh, you learn at one of those uh, expensive art schools, you know, uh, uh, Flip the image. Seriously, just, just flip the image uh, and you'll see clearly like what's happening. Uh, your eye just sort of settles on one way and if you flip it, uh, problems are more glaring. I can already say her left arm is, is bent weirdly. The values on both uh, hand shadows seem off. The leg seems... the, the thigh seems long. Notice how this was also a problem in my first example. Like, maybe Shad has a blind spot about this. The foreshortening on the leg doesn't really seem right. And also, and, and, and bear with me here, uh, Shad says he sees something in the composition, which, you know, fair. Uh, but he also says it's not quite there yet. But then, he, he, he doesn't change the composition? <laughs> Is is it like just removing the building behind it or, or something? That's not composition. If I wanted to make this image uh, more dynamic, because it, it is it is kind of stiff, I might try using the diagonal lines to my advantage, right? Shift it around a bit, maybe get a nice perspective going on, make it feel like she's coming at us. Maybe use the cape to get a sort of a triangle shape going on. A lot of people don't know this, but the, the triangle shape is like an, an S tier uh, composition tool. It, it can be used in so many different ways. It can give power, hierarchy, direction, focus, it can express speed, uh, can be used for foreshortening, etc, etc, etc. It's really very versatile uh, in its meaning. Uh, when in doubt, try it out. I'm doing the nitpicking again, so you'll excuse my arrogance. But if you send this to a studio, like for a Supergirl movie, that's basically what your boss will tell you. And trust me, the feedback is way more brutal than what I'm giving. As an example, here is Shad's second tweet. 
uh, going through two cheeky, cheeky shit posters uh, talking about his image, giving feedback. Uh, maybe with a little bit of venom, I'll give you that. I'm pretty sure the first feedback is from George Crudo. Crudo? Is that how you say it? The second one, I don't know. Whatever. Uh, actually, it's not George Crudo. I thought it was, uh, but it's not. Uh, but I still wanted to keep this in, because he's a cool dude. So go check him out. The image isn't the same as the one in the video. Just just roll with it. I, I know, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Don't. These two Chaos Goblins pointed out things that were working against the image, right? One of them is all about lighting, the first one. Really going through these multiple light sources that tears apart the image. Uh, kind of rips the focus. Uh, and the light at the back doesn't give a backlight, which would severely help this image, I think. That that bracelet uh, on, on the right is very shiny too. It, it, it's a lot. The second image is a more in-depth review of, of things to get fixed. Uh, things like... <laughs> where is her pelvis? Why does she have a, a five head? A shed? A sheed? Apparently, artists can draw anything and everything they like, but uh, they can't write for shit. <laughs> and you know, fine, fine. Maybe Shad doesn't need a, a blockbuster movie poster. Uh, maybe that's not what he needs from this work. But if you are a young artist with dreams of making it big in the industry, this shit won't cut the salami. Part 4, The Belly of the Beast. The entertainment industry is constantly looking for new ways to feed its grinder. And usually the food has always been young, impressionable artists by the millions. Like seriously, look around at movies, TV, comics, games, especially games. And you won't have to wait long at all actually to find endless crunch times, unpaid labor, mass licensing. Uh, as of writing this, multiple game studios, high profile game studios, engaged in mass firing campaigns, despite record profits. Just something to think about, maybe? I'll stop. It shouldn't be surprising, therefore, that most studios would cynically rejoice at the idea to churn even more content at the expense of the artist, or even at expense to quality. In my mind, and I could be wrong about this, but when, if I think of jobs in a pipeline that might suffer the most from AI, my money would go to concept artists. I mean, why not, right? Th their work really isn't seen by most people. They're, they're an inside property thing, right? Uh, their function is to help other artists like animators, modelers, environment artists, set designers, pe people like that, to, they're there to help them visualize the world. Most of their work is basically like research. And, and didn't I say earlier in the video that most concept artists use cheats like this, like photo bashing, to make their job easier? Well, with AI, we could cut that research down to half. Those concept artists will be living the high life, I say. They would have it so easy, in fact, that, you know, maybe we could give them more work. But actually, you know what? Since it's easier, we might as well just cut their pay. This is the drawback of easier tools, more efficient tools under capitalism. Yeah, I said the word. It took me, like, one video essay about two hours in <laughs> to get to this point. This is speedrunning. <laughs> if a new tool made everything easier and cheaper, that doesn't necessarily spell bad news for workers. Workers could, in theory, cut down their work 
create more of it, and then generate more profit for them and their co-workers. It's when introduced to a capitalist society that the tool is actively harmful. Mostly because bosses make the actual decisions and their paycheck matters more than yours. For the most part, these artists in the industry do know more than shads about color theory and, and anatomy and all that jazz I was talking about. They sure know a whole megaton more than me. No shade to Shad, of course. He's an artist in his own right, and I will fight people who say the contrary. But there's just no comparing. It's like putting a vampire's strength against a human's. It's You're destined to fail at that point. You'll always be outclassed against people at the top of their industry, literally holding their skills for years. And you know what will happen if most people start using AI in the industry? They'll start to cut corners. Not because they're going to get lazy, but because deadlines will become so razor thin that they simply have to. Young artists in particular will enter this new landscape expecting to drop huge amounts of work. I fear a lot of them might not go deeper than Chad's understanding of art. And that's just too bad because it, it won't lead to a decline, to a decline in quality. Either that or artists hurting themselves even more. That's kind of grim, don't you think? I don't know if I'm wrong about this, to be fair. Uh, I can't predict the future. Maybe the industry is more resilient than, uh, than I think it is. Uh, but I do know that it's never been easier to learn. We do live in an unprecedented era of communication. The only reason I know as much as I do about art uh, is because I've spent years, like literal years, uh, reading books, listening to artists uh, on the internet and like IRL, and, and uh, hearing their tips and tricks. And, you know, I suspect Shad does too. So if you are interested, here are a few places to start and hopefully to improve. Part 5, second training. Uh, I, I, I don't know where I'm going with this. It, it was cool at the start, but now I don't know. Oh, I should have done a, a, a call to action one. Part 5.5, call to action. Uh, subscribe to my shit. <laughs> So I'm going full Picasso on this shit, and I'm just gonna steal like an artist. And you're gonna watch me do it with style. When it comes to art tips, your mileage may vary, but uh, for me personally, uh, my growth and my work, uh, one of the best art tips I heard was from this video of Ethan Becker. Don't you ever draw from imagination. Never draw from imagination, ever. All right, what is style? I'm gonna break it down into two simple terms that your little infant brain can understand. Style is mileage plus reference, all right? That's all it is. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick three artists and we're going to combine each of their styles, one's genre, one's shape language, and one's line quality. We're gonna combine all those three to create your own style. This tip, this way of thinking helped me so much. It gives you a great exercise to sort of wire your brain to think in a certain way uh, and, and uh, sort of determine what you like and don't like. I mean, this is basically what I did about that rants about lines, right? This, this is it, but just applied to actual drawings and therefore valuable. Also, also, all of Ethan's vids are really good. You should check them out. Link in the, 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 the description. Uh, in fact, basically every artist I reference will be on there. What this method implies, too, is you better start diversifying your portfolio. And I'm not talking about your actual, like, art book portfolio or even your bank account portfolio. I'm talking about the portfolio in your mind. Listen, AI bros have got it. Right, they've won. They they have the most biggest, baddest wolf of a data set 
uh, in the world and can't be defeated. They have the most knowledge. What we have, though, is a way to funnel information. If you're a conductor trying to build an opera, but you don't know what to pick and choose, your orchestra is going to sound like shit. Even if you have the best trumpets in the game and the, the guys who do the violin, I, I don't know music. Ethan recognizes this and creates different ways to categorize elements of a drawing. You basically go through three artists and choose a category you want to study. He explains it better than I do. You basically choose three artists uh, that you like and put them in a category to study. Like one artist might be line work, another might be color, uh, and yet another might be um, uh, anatomy or shape form, shape language. And then with all that applied knowledge, all that learned knowledge, you apply it to uh, uh, a synthesized version of those three artists. You sort of like mash them all together. Will the resulted image look uh, uh, anything close to pretty? No, probably not. I don't know. <laughs> not at your first attempt, no. But that's not the point. The important part is you now know what looks good together and what doesn't. You see how this might be useful, the sort of modular concept right and the best part is it doesn't even have to be like three categories you can do like the uh, atmosphere you can do composition you can do uh like i said shape language anything that you can categorize and study you can put it in there there is at least one other way of doing like th this exact thing that i know of i've done this at school you basically take a famous painting and make it uh, uh in an other artist's different style just basically taking Mona Lisa but in the style of uh, Rembrandt or Monet it, it does work pretty well too uh, if you find Ethan's methods overwhelming if you struggle with color theory Marco Rucci has you covered for Marco uh, Marky Mark as I call him um, what really holds an image together in terms of colors is like the values of a given composition, of a given artwork. Why am I struggling with this? They're like the basic structure of any uh, work you're going to have to paint. And for that, probably the best video from Mr. Bushi uh, is his grayscale video. Marco paints in color, but importantly, under a color filter. So he only sees in black and white. Uh, he then reveals the color underneath. And the image just kind of works. Because he, he was only focusing on values. It's, it's also kind of magical to, to see. Uh, uh, check it out in the video. I, I, I don't want to spoil it for you. It, it's also... A, it's it's a fun game too. Uh, which I find kind of genius. Uh, I always thought that you, you can learn so so much uh when sort of treating the process as a game the channel cynics design has a pretty good video called painting like a sculptor it's very intuitive even though it is hard to do uh kind of an oxymoron i guess but yeah he basically uses paint as uh carving tools and uh does get more realistic ways of doing his uh his shit basically and you know this sort of goes in tandem with uh the um, uh marco bucci uh thing where what holds up an image is values you do sort of see how these things connect right where he he will have a base color that's uh, very bright and then just sort of carves into that uh with a darker color which gives that that really sharp crunchy edge to it Oh, but Noah, you, you haven't given tips for, for realistic drawings. Uh, th this is all stylized work. And in fact, if you go uh, to the, the your portfolio, it's, it's mostly stylized work. You're kind of a hack, actually. Yeah, okay, you got me. Bravo. I do prefer stylized over realistic. Uh, you get a cookie. I'll, I'll mail it to you if you want. Uh, 
Uh, but I still got you covered. Do your characters seem stiff? Do they look like they wouldn't budge, even if the paper caught on fire? If so, Psycho might want a word with you. Two videos of his uh, were really helpful for me. Uh, how to draw interesting poses, uh, and how to draw poses with purpose. Both give ways to think of and search for uh, reference poses that you can get inspired by and go the extra mile uh, to give more character to your characters. Also, 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 gesture drawing, uh, that helps a lot. And it, it does really seriously just, just do gesture drawing if you have the time. Even with people walking on the street, don't don't be weird about it. But you know, is is three D work cheating? I feel like it's cheating. I don't know. You know what? I like three D artwork. And fuck you. One of the benefits of three D art is you can use it as as reference. For example, if you know a bit uh, of know how, if you know your way around Blender or Maya, you can have like a very basic setup and just sort of play with lights. And have a model uh, in the middle, like maybe a statue or something. And you can just use that as reference to sort of uh, help you understand planes and, and how the light works, how the light hits. You can even use like uh, references from other artists and try to study them. And uh, pro tip, uh, if you can, try to get uh, like occlusion uh, views of, of their works. Occlusion is basically uh, a pass for 3D art where only the darkest parts of uh, an image will be shown. It's a grayscale image basically. It's only in black and white and remember what I said about values, they're extremely important. If you can get that uh, and understand how shadows work uh, basically in, in nearly every situation you're set for life one of the ways to do that is like maybe take an image uh, like for example this one from Ali Glenn and uh, see he has grayscale images and he even has multiple lights with grayscale which is awesome you can really just play to your heart's content with this the same image and uh, play with the colors uh, and the lighting and the values. If you're going for environment, uh, a key word is focus. You need focus for your environments. Uh, you do want to sort of guide the eye to a certain place. Tom Tom Benkowski is that how you pronounce the name? I'm I'm sorry. Uh, on this. Uh, artwork called Shelter. He has like interior uh, shadows and exterior light. And it does, you, you might think it's like, oh, it's just a light from the outside. But it, not really. Like I, in this shot, it's the, the light, the brightest part of this image is coming right from here, like the, the middle of the image. That's important. Like he, he chose that. You see how this. Uh, little thing here, this piece of wood is directing to uh, the, the central part of the image. The perspective too, it gives lead way. Remember the, the triangle thing I, I talked about, that th this is one of them. It gives way to the center of the image and that's important. We are definitely getting at the end of my <laughs> wheelhouse here, but uh, I guess if your aim still is like photo realism um, maybe a good way to do that is is um, uh, try to get inspired by f photographers like actual photographers get a feel for how they use focus uh, th there's like lots of stuff like in, on depth of field and camera aberration uh, that just gives that little oomph to make a real image look real uh, like camera grain too maybe even like Get a camera and, and understand how it works. And try try using a try making a few photos for yourself. Now, that could be a thing. If nothing else, you might find a new hobby. I didn't really write a conclusion to this, so you know. Oh baby, oh baby. I'm 
saying this and, and showing this uh, kind of to prove a point, I guess. No two artists' journey uh, is the same, um, but the journey is long. That that doesn't mean that to be an artist you have to suffer, but it does mean you have to learn. I don't know where I'm going with this. I, I don't even know if it's going to uh, be interesting or to get to the audience I want it to get, but, you know. But a lot of people just sort of talk about the, uh, the theft part of AI, which is, like, bad, of course. But uh, there's also this whole other part of AI that, um, like I said, it, it's not that people become lazy, is that people don't learn. I hope you found this video helpful, uh, the sort of repertoire of uh, a lot of artists and techniques that I found helpful. Um, I guess the best conclusion is no conclusion, so... Bye.